just going to ignore the fact that I have to move out of my dorm in June and focus on the bright side, the comforting aspects of my new books. It has literally been more than a year since I did a book haul because I was doing my very very best to only buy books online remembering that I am moving out of my house, remembering that I'm moving into a dorm that has limited space, remembering that books are really expensive and I'm not a self-made millionaire who has the space and the money for it, yet manifesting it. Generally remembering that online helps save trees and online I like the online book format and it's very convenient and I was doing very well. I only bought like four books for myself. <laughs> And so this, <laughs> on the 26th of October, it was my birthday and my friends know me very well and they know that I'd rather do away with reason, the critique of your reason and logic and general common sense that I do not have the space for books that, and they knew that I wanted books, <laughs> that my heart was craving the feel of the paper, the smell of the paper. So here is a very, very happy book haul. Up first is actually a book that is definitely not a surprise because I heavily <clears throat> hinted that I wanted to read some more Italo Calvino and that's because I read A Fun Winter's Night, A Traveler. I can't stop thinking about this amazing postmodernist Christmas tale and Marco Valdo. If in a winter's night a traveler, and I know I've talked about that book so many times because it was absolutely one of my favorites of last year, it's essentially a book where you join the main character on a hunt for the real book. So what you're holding is actually the fake book as you realize. And while you're joining the main character on the hunt to find the true book, you go through a lot of very interesting and very engaging stories of the fake books. and. If that doesn't sound mind-blowing enough, wait until you find out that you're actually part of the story. <laughs> and Marco Valdo by Italo Calvino is actually a short story collection full of very quirky and fun seasonal stories which make for a great short read. Cosmic Comics is also a short story collection but from what I've gathered it's way more whimsical and another bright feat of imagination from Calvino. I think it will definitely be much more special. Cosmic Comics tells the story of the creation of the universe through a really fun and comic character, a chameleon-like figure who shapeshifts according to the narrative he tells. So there's a different interpretation of like how the moon used to be very close to the earth and how it flew away. So I just think it's a very fun read that's less grounded in reality and at the same time has Calvino's brilliant prose and apt allusions and metaphors. His writing is truly a vibrant gift. His short stories a brilliant display and defeat of imagination and creativity. I mean, of course, because they're just such a step away from the realist narratives of his time. So I hope that you will add Italo Calvino to your shelves. And I cannot wait to get into this book. Next book is the TikTok sensation, Kane's Jawbone. Okay, this is a murder mystery that you have to solve and there's basically six murders and you have to find out who committed the murders and who are the six people that died and you have to piece the story together and there's literally millions of possibilities and i mean millions because it's quite a thick book right and the stories are in the wrong order so to solve this book is no easy feat because there's millions of there's it, there's millions of possibilities and only one of them is correct and it's also very hard to figure out which one is the correct solution because i mean how are you supposed to know but you can know if you're a very attentive reader this was first published in the 1930s and since then only like three people have solved it so it has made quite a buzz on the internet in the last year because it was republished in 2021 and they are now offering another prize to the people who attempt to solve it. And the deadline for that is actually this year, the 31st of December. So when I found out, I knew I had to try immediately. <laughs> the author used to be the crossword maker for The Observer and his puzzles are famously very hard. I, look, I'm not going to be overconfident and say that I can solve it because to be honest, I'm not that good at puzzles, but I do read a lot of murder mystery novels and I do actually manage to Get the solution a lot of the times if i read attentively so i will channel 
all my brain cells and try my best to solve before the year ends. And I'm also leaving on the 11th of December to take a plane and to fly back to Moscow. So um, I definitely need to solve this before then. Wish me luck and please let me know if you've attempted this before. Cicero needs no introduction because his life is too broad and too too complex to fit into a single short video, but he was an incredibly well-educated man who was well-versed in philosophy and Greek and rhetoric and law, and he's very famous for quite a lot of his speeches, but especially the one titled In Catilina. So I, that's basically an attack against Catilina, who he accused of attempting to overthrow the Republic and to kill himself, like he accused him of the attempt to do so. I actually read that speech when I was uh, doing like the block of that time with my Latin teacher. I think, honestly, personal opinion, no hate, no hate, I'm sure a lot of people will disagree, that uh, Cicero's speech and the Aeneid is probably the most interesting Latin text. Like, this, this is just my opinion, but those were the works that I enjoyed the most. And I'm sure that you can make an argument and say there's other technical and more important stuff in history, but I just really enjoyed those the most. And my friend knows that I'm learning Latin, and she actually got me this edition of Cicero's orations, so his speeches. Actually, in Catilinum is not here, so I will have to make sure to find, find that speech online and read it for myself again with the translation. But this one, what I like about this edition is that it has the Latin on the left and it has the English on the right. So let me just open a speech. Oh, open a page. And from what I've read, the English translation is very good and very poetic. And I'm just excited to hear Cicero's takes on everything. And I think that as a future law student, this will also be very beneficial for me and for my development as well. And I just want to say that I'm so happy that editions like this exist because, not going to lie, I find grammar very, very hard in all of the languages that I'm learning and studying. Uh, memorizing vocabulary is one of the easiest things for me, but grammar always gets me. So hopefully with this I can practice my Latin grammar as well. Not to read! This is actually a book that I got for myself as a birthday gift for myself. Oh my god, that sounds like such a selfish thing to do, but I couldn't resist because I wanted a Fitzcarraldo edition for so long, not only for just the simple goal of supporting independent publishing, which I feel like I don't do enough because I always like buy online or I buy from Amazon, so it was just really nice to support an independent publisher for once. Also because uh, in recent months I have not accepted any ARCs, I am very sorry, I have been very flooded with a lot of work, so it was just nice to support it. And also, I love Fitzcarraldo editions so much, I love the works that they publish, I love their covers, and I love what they're introducing to the market, like not, not to go on a whole tangent about covers, but Everything is very maximalist these days. The covers are bright and attention because, you know, the attention economy, you need to catch the reader's attention to make sure that they're going to buy your book. I get that. I, I don't mind maximalism. I love very bright covers as well, especially with illustrations. Those are wonderful. But there's just something about an edition that looks like this, that is so little fuss, that motivates you to just stop faffing around and to get serious and to sit down and actually devote the time and attention to this book and I am so 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 excited to read not to read by Alejandro Zambra I hope I'm pronouncing that correct so Zambra is essentially writing a series of essays uh, about his experience with reading and his reviews of authors like Natalia Ginsburg or like Marquez his takes on what authors to read, what authors to not to read, uh, so yeah, and there's also quite a bit on like writing and typewriters and just pen and paper, so I'm very excited to get into this, especially since I've been on a somewhat of a literary critique binge. I don't know what prompted me, but I recently finished Sartre's What is Literature, I bought, managed to secure a second-hand edition of uh, literature in the modern world, and I 
also found Peter Barry's book as well. So I think that in between the heavy theory stuff, this is perfect because what better than to read a wonderfully written collection of essays by a fellow book lover who is so passionate. Like, I think there's just... It's just something else to read an author who's passionate. The book takes on another level. It takes on a whole new other shine. So I honestly cannot wait to sit down with Not To Read. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. This is probably the first time that I had absolutely no idea what a book was. I have not heard of this. I have not seen it anywhere. I scroll around on bookstagram a lot. Follow my bookstagram! <laughs> yeah, because I scroll around a lot and like I keep up with other bookstagram accounts and stuff, I like I usually just see a lot of books and even if I don't remember about the book itself, I can like vaguely remember the cover or the description. This I have never seen in my entire life. I have never heard of the author, I've never heard of the title, I have never seen the cover, so it took me by surprise and I just think it's really nice to sometimes have these books that take you completely by storm when you just say, what is this? So from the cover, I think you can tell that this is YA. <laughs> I assume it's YA based on the cover. Blurb says it's a searing novel about one girl's struggle with anorexia. So I haven't actually read anything about eating disorders, so I think that this will be a very helpful book and hopefully a source of advice on how to approach communication with people who are struggling, how not to be this overbearing presence but instead to be a figure of support, someone they can confide in and how to pick and choose the right words. Not sure how much I'm going to enjoy the concept of like her best friend dying and her voice and like the spooky element to it. I don't know if it's going to be appropriate or not. I guess we'll find out. And I think that a first person narrative and YA books especially help with understanding and building empathy. So please let me know if you've seen this book or heard about it anywhere, if you've read it, what are some of your thoughts? And I'm very thankful for this gift because it's very surprising. <laughs> From the same person that gave me Winter Girls, I also got Our Kind of Cruelty, another book that I haven't heard anything about, so I am very, very intrigued. And the cover as well, like the concept, I, okay, I have a guilty spot for novels about obsession and stalkers. I don't know, there's just something about the subject that makes it a fascinating read for me. Mike and Verity used to play a game where the goal was to prove that Verity loves Mike and that she's willing to do anything for him. But now Verity is getting married and Mike still thinks it's a game. So is it love? Is it obsession? And it, usually in games like this, there's definitely going to be someone who gets hurt. <laughs> oh my god, this feels so sick to like laugh about it and stuff, but seriously, guilty pleasure. And also, probably the reason why I'm so paranoid when I walk around at night, please do not approach me if it's dark and I'm alone unless you're a girl that's half my size because then I think I can... I, I like my chances, you know? Also, can I just take a really random detour? And I mean, there's a limited amount of what I can say about this book, but we had this woman come in to, to our college to talk about law and suddenly, like, we're talking about property law, etc. And then she just goes, Oh, and if you're a girl, you shouldn't be scared to walk around at night. The homicide statistics say that men are more likely to die. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. First of all, relevance. 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 <laughs> and second of all, um, she does realize, right, that homicide is not the only statistic we should be looking at. And also, I just think that it's like common precautions that someone should take. Everyone in general, like if you go out at night, better to walk in groups, better to have some form of protection, better to be prepared to take well-lit alleys, like you know? I get it, don't let fear impact your opportunities, but also stay safe. <laughs> and definitely don't think about all the horror movies or the horror books that you've read when you walk past a really shady corner. <laughs> so my worst habit, <clears throat> I will be exposing myself as well, is probably not finishing the sequel. I think that's my worst habit personally. 
no matter how much I love a book, no matter how much I fan girl about it, if I do not have the sequel directly in front of me, like already bought and ready by the time I finish the book, it's not happening. I am not reading the sequel. And that's exactly what happened with Children of Blood and Bone. I am so sorry. I love that book so much. I remember even three years later, because it has been three years, that it was so well written. And I really like the concept. So it's about a girl fighting back about her fighting back against her oppressors. So they killed her mother, she wants to get her revenge, and they stole magic from her and they're actively trying to get rid of her like tribe I think they called it so I am very interested to see what happens next I really really vividly remember the ending of the first book because I don't know like I just thought it was so interesting I don't know why I never got to the sequel but I am very thankful to my friend who I have no idea how he found out that I haven't read the sequel probably just very smart guesswork knowing that I never read the sequel and well finally <laughs> it's here children of virtue and vengeance I am praying that I really like the sequel. I think part of the secret reason why I don't pick up the sequel is actually because I'm scared of ruining my memories and the characters. Like if the second book is bad, I think my memory will become tainted, even if I like the first book. So thank you for this reminder to finally finish the story. And honestly, can we chat booktube? Does this live up to the hype? I, I really hope it does. <laughs> Another book I have been thinking about for three years, City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay, controversial opinion time. Um, I was going to read this. I was fully like saving money to get it and stuff. And then I saw Eat, Pray, Love. Not the entire movie, the trailer. And I also read a review that basically said it's another woke self-help book that tells you that everything you need to be happy is just to like luxuriously spend your money and go to a very spiritual place like India to unlock like some inner sense of happiness and start living for yourself and I just I just don't vibe with self-help books and I don't like tips like that because I think it's ultimately very a very spoiled and privileged tip like oh you can be happy just don't worry just spend your money carelessly just do what you want I, I just think that it's not the life style for everyone so writing it in a self-help book is it's a scam so i was kind of on the fence about reading city of girls because it's set in new york in the 1940s amidst the glittering and glamorous setting and these two girls try and follow their desires and break social conventions and to pursue their dreams and while that seems like an admirable goal and like something I would very much enjoy, remember that I was concerned about Eat, Pray, Love. I think it's good to dare to like something and to dare to think that you might enjoy it. And it's just a very harmful preconceived notion to have that you will not like this book based on just another person's review, I think. I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with not buying books because you think you won't like them. I just want to stress that. I do that all the time. I just think that it's not necessarily a bad thing that sometimes you go out on a whim and actually try a book that you don't usually try because it leads to finding out that you have new interests and new things that you like. So I am also very intrigued to get into City of Cross. And also, look at this cover. Transcendent by Lisa Tadeo. I love Lisa Tadeo. Animal is one of my favorite books of this year. All right. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video and to my friends, you know who you are. I didn't want to review your names in case you wanted to stay anonymous. Thank you so much for these books. I really appreciate it. Thank you for making my hidden desires come true. I am so very excited to get to all of these. And of course, I'm going to find you and tell you all about the books that you gifted me and everything that I think. So stay tuned for that. To everyone else, thank you so much for being here and see you next week.